microphone? Maybe not. Okay, wait one second. I'll speak up. <laughs> uh, good morning. Uh, I want to let you know that there is a, a baptism this afternoon at... No, I've got my... <laughs> There's a baptism this afternoon at uh, 3 p.m. Uh, in the church, and at 5 o'clock... Uh, there's a teens concert to raise money for ADRA. Tomorrow, there's a health festival on Stambra Park starting at 12 noon. Terry Menkins has asked me to thank those who've been praying for him, and he says he's feeling much better and his breathing is improved. Amen. Thank you also for praying for Beth, who is feeling better, and Sheena uh, Gert. <laughs> Here, here. Amanda, and all those suffering from COVID. Mm -hmm. We do have two transfers uh, into Stambra Park Church, which should be voted today. Uh, the first one is Simeon Williams from Stratford uh, SDA Church to Stambra Park. Uh, could I ask uh, for someone to propose that? It's proposed and it's seconded. All those in favor? Thank you. And the second name we have is Cesar Linda Williams from Stratford SDA Church to Stambra Park. Can we have a proposal? Thank you. It's proposed and it's seconded. And all those in favor? Thank you very much. Any against? That's carried. Thank you very much. Um, let's just pray now as we ask God's blessing on this service. Our Father, Creator God, we thank you for your compassion and grace revealed in Jesus Christ. We thank you for your healing power. Thank you for your comforting presence of the Holy Spirit to guide our thinking and to give us hope for the future. We praise you and ask that you bless us according to our needs. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, I was going to say, it's Roger's birthday today, Ooh. and it's not every time that we have an elder on duty, that's his birthday. So I thought, let's give him a warm parallel, and let's sing a happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday, birthday to you. Thank you. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Roger. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that is a first for me. <laughs> uh, God is good. Your first And the birthday. sun is shining. Thank you. <laughs> Roger's first birthday. <laughs> Morning, church. Morning. Thank you, Gert. I, I, normally I rely on you, Roy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good morning, church. Good morning. morning, Dan. Excellent. We're gonna we're gonna stand and sing now. Um, so if we could all stand up, and we will um, join in some praise and worship to our King and our Savior. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Love to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. You are my strength. My strength when I am weak, you are the treasure that I seek, you are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel, not to give.
cross my shame Rising again I bless your name You are my only Lord When I fall down you pick me up When I am dry you fill my cup You are my only Lord Jesus
overflow of hearts as we gaze upon your beauty a reflection of your word for we see the glimpse of you in your glory Lord when the music fades all is stripped away and I simply come Longing just to bring Something that's worth That will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself is not what you have required you search much deeper within through the way things appear you're looking into my heart i'm coming back to my heart of worship it's all about you and it's all about you Jesus I'm sorry Lord for
And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made. When it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones do Sorry, this one. Can I encourage people to move forward, please? They um, are we. We've got empty seats in front, so can I just encourage everybody yes, to move forward? Jesus loves me. morning church i just want to encourage us to move forward um we've got empty seats in front and because of the optics it doesn't look nice so i know that the children are going to like this it's children's story now but when the children have gone back can i just encourage people to move one seat forward if you don't mind thank you today's Today's children's story is about two special parrots. So the story begins in Puerto Rico. Grandma Maria was the first member of the Colon family to become a Seventh-day Adventist. She loved Jesus very much and it didn't take long for people to realize that. Everyone in the neighborhood knew that. Grandma lived in a big house in Puerto Rico. The house was always a bustle of activity in the basement, Grandpa operated a furniture factory. Every day you could hear the sounds of saws, hammers, machines, spray painting guns, and workmen shouting above the noise as they all made their beds, dresses, cabinets, tables, and chairs. The smell of wood shavings and spray liqueur blended together with heat and, hum and humidity of the tropics. Upstairs, life was very busy too. Family, several of grandma's children were now grown ups and lived in the house as well. And they had their own children, which of course were grandma's grandchildren. And then there were the neighborhood children who would come to visit. The delicious smells from the kitchen were always an attraction for those who passed by the big house. And grandma was always there to invite them in for a glass of water or for a meal. Grandpa would often be seen loading the factory trucks with furniture to be delivered to various stores in town. Grandma was the only Seventh-day Adventist in the family. It wasn't easy. When family worship time came, she always invited the members of the household to join her for singing. Bible readings and prayers. Sometimes there were those who would join her, but most of the time, Grandma found herself alone on the back porch with God and her two parrots. Their names were Pepe and Susie, how she, loved, how she enjoyed having family worship. She would sing songs and read, Bible, and read the Bible out loud. Sometimes she would even preach to her parrots when there was no one else for her to talk with. Soon, the two parrots, Peppa and Susie, began to learn to sing some of Grandma's favorite hymns. Her favorite hymn was Holy, Holy, Holy. Every time Grandma would start to sing that hymn, Peppa and Susie would begin to sway that sway back and forth with their necks stretched out, singing the song with all their might. Grandma also repeated certain words and phrases from sermons she had heard. Her parrots learned those too. It wasn't long before, the, before one or the other parrots would shout, prepare, the Lord is coming. Peppa and Susie were kept in a cage at the top of the steps that came from the basement to Grandma's back porch. In, grandma's base, in Grandpa's basement furniture factory, there was one worker named Carlos. He was very lazy. Carlos would saw the board and then he would take a rest. Every time Carlos's corner got quiet, the two parrots would, would call out his name. Carlos, 
get back to work, in a scolding voice. This would make Carlos very angry. He got so angry that one evening, he climbed the stairs to up from the factory. He opened the latch of the parrot's cage and left it open. Early the next morning, while it was dark, one of grandma's neighbors woke up to the sound of voices outside her window. Holy, 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 prepare, the Lord is coming. The neighbor lady ran to the window and peered out into the darkness. Along, along came the song and the warning cry. Prepare, the Lord is coming. With that, she hurried out onto the street only to find others who were, who were asking each other, did you hear what I heard? Grandma heard the commotion and joined the group. She happily announced that her parrots must be up in that tree. Soon Pepe and Susie were back in their cage, leaving grandma to explain to her neighbors how it happened that her parents learned to sing and that her parrots learned to sing and preach. Some of grandma's neighbors said they wished they knew more about the Bible. So grandma offered them Bible studies. Several of them gave their hearts to Jesus and were baptized. We all know that Pepe and Susie were just repeating words and sounds that they heard grandma say in family worship. They didn't really understand what it meant. But we know about the love of Jesus from the Bible. Jesus is our friend, and we can tell others about his love. If Pepe and Susie could witness for Jesus by just repeating sounds, how much more could we do by, by intelligently sharing our love for Jesus with others? Would anyone like to pray for us, a closing prayer? Oh, I'll pray, okay. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that we, will all, that we will all bring here today. Please bless these children so that they can t spread the word about you and, Im and invite, those to invite their friends to church. Amen. possible, let's just take up a reverent attitude for prayer. Hmm? Dear Father in heaven, may we be still and know that you are God. May we take time to reflect on your attributes, your creative power, your wisdom, and your love for each individual. We praise you for your openness and integrity and respect for our freedom. You must experience immense pain, Lord, as you see all the suffering caused by sin. And we acknowledge that we are part of the problem. Forgive us for the pain we cause by our self-centered thinking and behavior and our indifference to the needs of others. We need your forgiveness, Lord, and spiritual renewal. Lord, we do not have the power or wisdom to bring spiritual and emotional healing, but you do. Though the mountains shake and the stormy seas foam, and instability threatens each one of us, you have promised to be our refuge and our strength. Father, we pray for those in Ukraine and other war zones who live in constant fear. We pray for those who are refugees and for your blessing on those who seek to provide support. We pray for our political and religious leaders. We pray for those who are struggling financially due to low income and rising costs and need practical support. 
We remember those who are sick and their family members and friends and those experiencing the pain of bereavement. We praise you for the hope we have of a reunion in the new earth where suffering and pain are but distant memories. We thank you, Lord, for the optimism and energy brought to this church by its children and youth. As they seek your guidance in their lives, give them wisdom and success in their studies and examinations. We pray for Micah, Lucy, and Karen, who are being baptized this afternoon that you will bless their lives as they seek to serve you. We pray for our speaker today, Pastor Terry Messenger. As we listen to words of scripture, may we be challenged and uplifted. May your love draw us closer to you and to each other. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, just before we go into the scripture reading, we're just going to have Fred present to us how to use the digital plates. So, Fred, you ready? Now, as you know, many of us are in a post-cash society these days, but even includes the banks. Good. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Given that we're in a post-cash society and even our banks are making it as difficult as possible for us to bank the cash that we collect at church, and given that there are ways around this now, this is one of the ways, and we thought we would try it as an experiment here at Stamford Park Church with the parallel service. So this is what they call a digital collection plate. I'm sure the people have put it in other Adventist churches because when they did a demonstration for me, a Zoom demonstration, I noticed the other categories included a Sabbath school offering and early teen Sabbath school offering as well. So I'm fairly sure that they had set that up for another Adventist church. It's very simple to use. It's just the same as when you go shopping or whatever. It does contactless. It does chip and pin. It's really to replace the offering plate. So we have other things on there. But it's, it can get very complicated. It needn't be. You can, you can register your card so you can do gift aid and all the rest. But you don't do that for the, the ordinary offering plate normally. So keeping it simple, top one there is budget. Select. There's, there's 5, 10, 15, 30, 50, 100 if you want to give a pound. Check the other amount. If you want to do over 100 pounds, you have to do chip and pin because you can't do contactless. So... You select the amount you want, you put your card against there, you say no when it says do you want to go and set up gift aid, and you're done. It works. Um, one of my treasurers and I did test it the other week, so we know it works because it took the money off our cards, and a couple of days later it was there in the church bank account. So it answers a lot of the questions we have. So all you have to do at the end, touch budget, Select the amount, tap your card, and you're done. So we'll have it at the back there, so as you don't take time out of the service. And after the service, if you want to put, in effect, money into the offering plate, do it with your plastic, and we'll do it as a digital offering plate. Okay? I'll be down, hanging around at the back, just in case you have any further questions. But I'm sure, of all the demographics in the church here, this is the group that will be least phased by having a digital collection plate. <laughs> Excellent, thank you very much. So I'll put this at the back. The only thing we have to, I have to work out with a deacon to make sure it's charged up on a Friday night. I brought it down the other week and it hadn't been charged up and I couldn't get it to switch on. So I'm afraid it's an Android tablet. 
not an I, 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 mini iPad. So um, I'm not an Android fan. It works, though. It's set up. It's on the secure wireless for the church here. So it's quick. It's secure. We're good to go. So we might have a little discussion after the service this morning. And I won't take any more of your time. Thank you very much. The scripture reading is taken from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Amen. I trust we've all had a very good week this week. I would say yes you have because you're here and you're alive. And that's a very good sign you've had a good week. I know some of us perhaps had a challenging week this week. Some might have had a fantastic week. We're here together to worship and praise God. And thank God for the years that passed by and we are still alive. I want to thank God that Roger is still alive today. Another year added to his bow today. We won't ask how old he is. I thought so. Oh, yeah, I, I was going to say that. <laughs> it's good to be with you. And um, I want to ask a question, a kind of rhetorical question, I guess. And that is, have you heard the voice of God this week? This past week, have you heard God speak to you. Now there's lots of people that speak to us, our family, our friends, relatives, neighbours, work colleagues, so many voices compete for our attention day after day, week after week. But have we actually heard the voice of God? And that begs another question, does God actually speak to us? Or is he silent? I would submit to us today that God is anxious to speak to us. He wants to speak to us. He loves to speak to us. But sometimes we're not listening. And that's where the problem lies. We know that words of human beings, our friends, can uplift us, can encourage us, can help us, and direct us and lead us in the right direction. Even rebuke us, tell us off sometimes as well. And we need those voices. But I would submit today, we need to hear the voice of God. I believe that God is still speaking to his people today. I want to relate to you a story happened a few years ago. 
It happened on the Brooklyn Bridge in the United States. I don't know how many of you have been to the Brooklyn Bridge. I haven't. This story comes from there. And it's a story about a young man. A young man who'd had enough of life. He'd had enough. Everything was getting on top of him. He was discouraged. He was despondent. He was in despair. And he went to the Brooklyn Bridge to end it all, to jump off and to end his life. He got to the bridge and he stood at the parapet on the bridge and was about to jump in. The police had got wind that this might happen and a policeman came and said, stop, whatever you do before you jump, just stop. So the young man looked at the policeman and the policeman said, don't do it. Don't jump. And he said, look, I'll do you a deal. He said, if you can explain to me in five minutes why you want to end your life, then if you allow me five minutes to explain why I don't want to end my life, then after that, if you feel you want to, you can still jump. And so the young man began to explain about his life, how difficult things were, how things weren't working out. Then the policeman spoke to him also and began to speak about his life, how things were working out in his life. After 10 minutes, they had both finished what they had to say. And then the policeman got hold of the young man's hand and they both jumped off. Sad story, very sad story. But sometimes the words of human beings are not enough. They're not enough for us. And I want to submit to us today, there is a story in the scriptures that talk about the voice of God speaking to someone who was despondent, who felt down in the dumps, who felt unhappy about life. Indeed, he was in a deep depression. It's found in 1 Kings chapter 19. Story of Elijah. Elijah who had performed a miracle, or well, God through him performed a miracle on Mount Carmel. How the prophets of Baal had been slain, how God had been vindicated through the fire coming down from heaven, and consuming the sacrifice. Elijah was on a high. Elijah had done great things for God. But, if you go into the verse of chapter 19 and verse 1, something happened that turned Elijah around from a high to a desperate low. It says there, it says, Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me be ever so severely if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like one of them. Can you imagine how Elijah must have felt? Jezebel was out for his life. She wanted to kill him. And Elijah was scared. He was petrified. After all that wonderful Mount Carmel experience, he was petrified of Jezebel coming to kill him and to do away with him. That's what it tells us in verse 3. Elijah was afraid. He was afraid and he ran for his life. When he came to Bathsheba in Judah, he left his servant there, while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness came to a broom tree, sat down under it, prayed that he might die. Wow. What had happened to Elijah? A man who had been used mightily by God had come to a point in his life now where he just wanted to die. It was too much. Life was too much for him. He wanted to end it all. And he sat down, it says, under the broom bush, sat down and prayed that he might die. And he said, I've had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. Elijah, the great prophet of God, had come to this. It seemed a point of no return, a point where things were coming to an end for him. He was in a deep depression. Things were dark. 
I wonder if life takes us that way sometimes. Things aren't going right in our lives sometimes. Things aren't going the way we would like them to go. Maybe there's problems in our workplace, with our family, with our finances. Maybe we feel lonely. Maybe we face victimization and bullying in the workplace. And we feel that things aren't going the right way. I've had enough, Lord. I've had enough. That's what Elijah said. And it says that he slept, went under the bush and fell asleep. You know, it's very common for people who suffer from depression to sleep a lot. And the reason why they sleep a lot is to escape, to escape life. I remember a few years ago now, I was speaking to a lady. And I went to visit her on a Tuesday, it was a Tuesday evening. And she explained to me how over the weekend she just slept right the way through the evening, from Friday evening right the way through to Sunday evening. Right the way through, 48 hours just sleeping. And she explained to me she enjoyed sleeping because she didn't like life. She'd had enough. Life was getting her down. Life was too much for her. That's what Elijah says here. Take my life, I'm no better than the ancestors. Then he lay down and fell asleep. There's something I love about this story. When people feel like Elijah, when they feel all alone, everything seems to be collapsing around them, God is there. God is there. It says all at once, and I like that phrase, all at once. God didn't waste any time. All at once an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. God was right there, waking him up from his sleep. He's there with us too, my friends. He's there with us. Do you feel despondent today, despite the fact you've come to church? Maybe you didn't feel like coming to church this morning. Maybe you didn't feel like getting up. But you're here. And God is with you, my friends. He's with each one of us, no matter what we're going through. All at once an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. He looked around and there lay by his head with some bread baked over hot coals, a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. You notice there was no word of thanks from Elijah. No word of thanks. He just got up, woke up, took of the food, ate and drank and went back to sleep. Elijah was so discouraged. Even the common protocols were not in his vocabulary at this time, even in his thoughts. One thing I like about God as well, though, he never gives up on his people. Because there Elijah is lying down again, he's gone back to sleep again, trying to escape from life. But they are told in verse 7, the angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. You see, Elijah was trying to get away from everywhere. He was trying to go as far away as possible. Somewhere where no one knew him. Somewhere where he could hide. God knew. He said, the journey is too much for you. I'm going to sustain you. I'm going to help you. So again, we're told in verse 8, Elijah got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he travelled for 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. Travelled a long way, 40 days and 40 nights, travelling, walking. And it says at the end of the journey, he went into a cave and spent the night. This experience of Elijah affected many of God's servants as well. King David himself suffered from discouragement. In Psalm 55, David prays this prayer. And he says, Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear my prayer and answer me. My thoughts trouble me and I am distraught. Because of what my enemy is saying, because of the threats of the wicked, they bring down suffering on me and assail me in their anger. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death have fallen on me. Fear and trembling have beset me. Horror has overwhelmed me. I said, oh, 
that I had the wings of a dove, I'd fly away and be at rest. Do you sometimes feel like that sometimes? Oh, that I had the wings of a dove, I could fly away and be far away from all my problems and difficulties in life. Somewhere I could find rest and peace and happiness. See, David is just elaborating on how Elijah felt. He's elaborating a feeling that common to humanity sometimes. Oh, thy the wings of a dove, I'd fly away and be at rest. I'd fly away and stay in the desert. I would hurry to my place of shelter, far from the tempest and storm. Oh, that I would fly away and be at rest. This was Elijah's thoughts at this time. He wanted to go far away, somewhere where no one could see him. And he ended up in this cave, this deep, dark cave. Had God forsaken Elijah? Was God far away? Was he not hearing his servant? Let's go on in the passage. We are told that while Elijah was in the cave, it says the word of the Lord came to him. God was there. Notice God spoke to Elijah. The word of the Lord came to him. And a very simple question was asked. The question was, what are you doing here, Elijah? What are you doing here, Elijah? <coughs> There was Elijah in this deep, dark cave, far away from everywhere, far away from everyone. But he wasn't far away from God. And God said to him, Where are you, Elijah? What are you doing here, Elijah? And Elijah spoke back to God. And he said, I've been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant torn down your altars, put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left to kill me too. Didn't Elijah feel sorry for himself? I am the only one left. Look what I've done for you, Lord. All the work I've done. And yet, here I am. Abandoned, it seems. No one cares, no one understands. Do we sometimes feel like that? Are there days that come upon us sometimes when we feel, where is God? Why has he abandoned me? Why is he not there? I've done so much for the Lord. I've been faithful to him. I've tried to stick with him, and yet he has abandoned me. This is how Elijah felt at this time, the great prophet of God, completely abandoned, the only one left, the only one who is really following God, he thought. No one else is, only me, only I am faithful. What happens next? Notice the Lord is still continuing to speak to Elijah. And the Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Isn't that fantastic? Just go and stand. Stand on the mountain, the presence of the Lord. I'm about to pass by. I've not abandoned you, Elijah. I'm with you. I'm going to pass by. Go and stand on the mountain. And that's what Elijah did. As was his custom, he obeyed the Lord. And we're told that a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. Can you imagine all these things taking place? Earthquake, fire, Great wind taking place. You would say, what's going on here? What's happening here? What, what is taking place? What is going on? You know, sometimes in our lives, 
and I can only speak about my life, sometimes you want the Lord to do something for you, to turn things around. And you're expecting a great miracle to take place, something amazing to take, something wonderful to take place, deliverance to take place, a rescue to take place. You want God to be in the earthquake, the wind and the fire. You want him to do great things so it can be seen clearly. But God doesn't always work like that. Instead, as we move on in this passage, we notice something else. After the fire, there came a gentle whisper. After the fire, there came a gentle whisper. What good is a whisper? Lord, I need you to do something for me, Elijah's thinking. What good is a whisper? Come on, Lord, you should have been in the earthquake. You should have been in the fire. You should have been in the wind. But instead, there was a gentle whisper. But there was something in that whisper that gave Elijah courage. It didn't seem so at first. It didn't seem as if things were happening at first, but something happened in the soul of Elijah when he heard that gentle whisper of God. And we are told that he pulled his cloak over his face, went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Elijah began to move. There was a stirring in his soul. Something was happening. His despondency was beginning to leave him. And then the voice comes again. What are you doing here, Elijah? And again, Elijah replies, I've been very zealous for the Lord Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and they're trying to kill me too. Still feeling discouraged, still feeling down, but there was a stirring at the same time. And the Lord said to him, Go back the way you came. Go to the desert of Damascus. When you are there, anoint Hazazel king over Aram. You see, God still had a work for Elijah to do. Despite his discouragement, despite his despondency, the Lord was saying, what are you doing here, Elijah? I've got something for you to do. And it was in that gentle whisper in that question that was asked, that brought fortitude to the soul of Elijah, that brought strength, that brought courage. And as you read on in this passage, Elijah goes on to conclude his ministry in a fantastic way, in an amazing way, making the way plain for Elisha, who is to succeed him afterwards. What are you doing here, Elijah? Have you heard the voice, voice of God to your soul this week? Has God spoken to you this week? That gentle whisper. Oh, are we looking for some kind of miracle to take place? Lord, I need something to happen. I need something amazing to happen. I need you to speak through the earthquake, the wind and the fire. I need to hear you loudly, clearly. When instead, there is a gentle whisper coming our way. Have we heard him? Have we heard that gentle whisper? It's trying to lift us into a new place. Perhaps even to a new ministry. A decision that needs to be made in your life perhaps, that God is trying to ease you into. What are you doing here, Elijah? What I like about this is God never abandons us. He's always there. No matter how we feel, no matter what we're going through, he is there with us. And all we have to do is believe it and hear that gentle whisper. Sometimes we may feel as if my life doesn't seem to amount to much. I don't seem to be doing much for the Lord. There's people who seem to be doing a lot more than I am. They're able to sing, they're able to preach, they're able to teach. What about me, Lord? I can't seem to do anything for you. Let me just say, it is those who are behind the scenes who do more for the Lord than those up front. That's what I've seen, that's what I've observed. 
people don't realize that people behind the scenes, maybe they're not preaching, maybe they're not teaching, maybe they're not singing, but they're serving God faithfully. And because of that, he is with them. It's so easy to become discouraged, become downhearted, and we compare ourselves with others when God says, hear my voice. What are you doing here, Elijah? You know, there was a song that came from a film called Bay, Peak in the City. I don't know if any of you have ever seen that film. Very good film. But there's a song that was written by Peter Gabriel and it was called That'll Do. And this song is a song that brings upliftment, certainly brought upliftment to the pig in that story, in that particular film. And I just want to read one verse to you right now. It says, A kind and steady heart can make a grey sky blue. And a task that seems impossible is quite possible for you. A kind and steady heart is sure to see you through. It may not seem like much right now, but that'll do. That'll do. You know, when I heard that song, it made me realise that God looks at each one of us and he loves each one of us. And sometimes we look down on ourselves. We berate ourselves. We don't think we're good enough. But in God's sight, we are valuable. We are valuable in his sight. And he comes to us and he says, look, what you're doing in your life that will do, that will do. You are my child. And I believe that's a gentle whisper coming to each one of us today. He says, my child, what you're doing in your life, what you're trying in your life, things you're trying to accomplish, things you're trying to do for me, it may be behind the scenes, you may not be up front, but that'll do, that'll do. My child, you are mine. What are you doing here, Elijah? Do we find ourselves in that cave today, that metaphorical cave, trying to run away from it all, get away from it all? Or do we instead hear the voice of God it says to us, my child, you are mine. The nail prints are imprinted on my hands because I died for you and I'm coming back for you. Don't worry about your life, whatever you're doing, because that'll do, that'll do. Let us, as we go through the week to come, let us not become so busy that we miss that gentle whisper, we miss the voice of God to our soul that will help us in our lives. Instead, let us hear that voice. And when that voice says to us, what are you doing here, my friend? Simply say, Lord, I'm serving you to the best of my ability. I want to go home with you, be with you forever. May that be our hope, may that be our wish, May that be indeed be our experience. In Jesus' name, amen. As we start to bring this service to a close, please stand and sing with us. You are my strength. Like no other, strength like no other, reaches to me.
so thankful indeed that you are our hope we thank you lord that you speak to us through many ways we want to pray lord that you will help us to hear your voice that gentle whisper that speaks to us sometimes we miss it because of the busyness of our lives the lord help us to hear that gentle whisper and now lord as we leave this place may the blessing of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit rest with us and abide with us forever in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy, mercy never, never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head and I will sing of the goodness of God. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so Through the fire, the darkest nights, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend. You have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God All my life All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able, I will see of the goodness of God. Your goodness. 
business is running after It's running after me, yeah Your goodness is running after It's running after me With my life laid down I surrender now I give you everything Your goodness is running after It's running after me Your goodness your goodness is running after, it's running after me, yeah. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. You have been faithful All my life You have been so, so good With every breath that I am able And I will sing Of the goodness of God Let's sing that again All my life All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I will sing I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing, I will sing of the goodness of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you for um, everyone that's come today and thank you for praising. Thank you for being part of our worship. And um, if you can all help with the, um, with the chairs, that would be great. Just take your chair, take it to the side, then it's really easy. And, um, and uh, blessings for the...